The electoral process in Kenya is not over yet. More than 14 million Kenyans went to the ballot on August 9th to vote for their next president, but the nation will have to wait a little longer before they can know their new leader. Why? Simple answer. A court process. One that may last weeks. But how did Kenya get here? The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission Chairperson Wafula Chebukati declared William Ruto as the winner of the presidential election, defeating Raila Odinga and two other candidates. Ruto garnered 50.49% of the votes cast, while Odinga garnered 48.85% of the votes. Raila, however, contested the results of this election based on events leading to Ruto's declaration. As Kenyans waited for the election results on August 15th, Four out of seven IEBC commissioners held a press briefing to denounce the results. According to them, the process was marred with opaqueness. A day later, Odinga issued another press briefing confirming his intention to challenge the result in court. So, what does the law stipulate? Odinga has until August 22nd to file his petition at the Supreme Court of Kenya. The court will then hear and make its ruling within 14 days of the case being filed. There are three possible outcomes. 1. The petition is thrown out and Ruto assumes the presidency on the first Tuesday, seven days after the ruling. 2. The Supreme Court sets aside IEBC's declaration of the presidential results and orders a fresh recount of the votes cast. And 3. The court nullifies the election and orders a fresh vote within 60 days of the ruling. In this case, Uhuru Kenyatta continues to serve as president. In 2017, Kenya earned the distinction of being the first African country to nullify a presidential election. Should the 2022 elections be nullified too, Kenya would again make history by becoming the only country globally to nullify two consecutive presidential elections. For now, the question remains, who will succeed Uhuru Kenyatta as Kenya's head of state?